Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be sharing the second part of my Q&A video and this will be focusing mostly on your luxury bags and designer related questions. I will post a link to the first Q&A video and that was mostly personal questions about like myself and my family and where I grew up and whatever. So this Q&A is mostly focused on bags and luxury stuff. So let's just get started. So the first question is, what do you miss most from working at LV? There were a lot of things that I, I miss. I, I generally miss retail in general. I think it was so fun. The team, you know, my colleagues were great, except for certain members of management, maybe, and then some coworkers, maybe. But generally, most people were just so fun and it was just, it was just such a fun environment and it was very fast paced. So I remembered the days would go by so quickly because you're just always busy with clients and just everything coming in. What I miss most was, I guess, so other than kind of the fast paced environment at the time was great. I would say the brand training was great. A lot of, you know, we would get all the materials for upcoming releases and it was just so exciting learning about what was new, what was coming out, the inspiration for the designs. That was always exciting. All the hot new launches. And then probably, and this might sound really cheesy, but because I remember vividly my first LV purchase when I was, I was still in high school, but I was always working and I saved up and I bought my first LV bag. It was my, it was the Speedy 25 monogram and I still have it. I remember helping clients who were buying their first LV bag and it was like their one and only, they were so excited. Some of them were younger. They had worked really hard and saved up money and they just were so excited to finally purchased this bag and I just loved, you know, creating this just memorable shopping experience for them and helping them and packaging the bag really carefully. It's kind of a bummer sometimes now when I purchase something from LV and I don't know if, I guess their packaging rules changed. Maybe it's like an environmental thing. They're trying to lower their carbon footprint, but you know, you, you're buying these multiple thousand dollar bags and they're not even wrapped up in tissue paper or anything and I remember when I worked at LV that was part of my favorite thing I love gift wrapping I love Christmas because I love wrapping presents I'm I think I'm a really good gift wrapper <laughs> you know I can make really cool designs with the wrapping paper I can fold the tissue paper really well and do the ribbons I just love that I love arts and crafts and so I loved creating a fun purchase experience, especially for first time buyers, whether it was someone who worked hard and was buying a bag for themselves or a husband or you know, boyfriend buying their you know, significant other their very first LV bag and it was something that they had you know, wanted for so long. It was such a joy helping these kind of first timers and making it really special for them because then they often would come back and they would buy a matching wallet or you know, shoes or whatever, they, then they became returning, you know, kind of lifelong clients. So that was fun. I miss that aspect of working at LV. What do you prefer as an everyday type tote, Deauville or Neverfull? So they're referring to the Chanel Deauville. I have two sizes in the Chanel Deauville. Then I have two Neverfulls. I have a World Tour Neverfull and the Denim Neverfull, which was a limited edition last year. Honestly, I, the Neverfull is not my favorite LV bag. I just, I know that it's very common for a first LV purchase. It's a great kind of a value because it comes with the pochette, but I just don't find the straps to be comfortable at all. I think the length is awkward and I'm short. I'm very short. I'm, I'm barely five feet tall and I just don't think it's comfortable. It's not comfortable <laughs> for me. I always advise getting a bag organizer and I have a Samorga bag organizer and it has a zip on the top. This way it closes completely, you know, the contents of the bag. So it's not an open tote. But in general, I always kind of gravitate towards the Deville, the Chanel Deville. I think it's so much easier to carry. I like that the larger size has the shoulder straps and it has the two top handles. For me, you know, when you're getting in and out of the car and these are just like, you know, but you have to think about these things, how you plan to use the bag. I'm getting in and out of the car. I have three kids. I need to just get myself and get in and out quickly. I want to be able to grab it by the top handles when I need to, but I also want to have comfortable shoulder straps where I can still kind of access the bag while the shoulder straps are on me. Does that make sense? So the Neverfull, because they're kind of shorter shoulder straps, it's just a little awkward under your arm. 
It's harder to get in and out of the bag. I just think the DeVille is a lot easier and it's a great carry-on bag for me. So, and as an everyday bag, I think the smaller size is a, maybe a little better of an everyday bag, but I just, I love the DeVille. For me and where I am personally in my life <laughs> with my kids, I think the DeVille is easier to use than the Neverfull. Advice or opinion on the best LV bag for luxury bag newbies? It's, it's hard to answer that question, but I recommend that everyone read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing by Marie Kondo. I read that book years ago and it, it changed my life. <laughs> I'm obviously not a minimalist, but the biggest takeaway from the book, and obviously it goes into more details, but generally you just need to keep what you love and own what you love and get rid of stuff that does not spark joy, right? Except for things that you need for work and living. So I would use that advice and apply that when you are buying your first luxury bag as a as a newcomer to the luxury you know, bag world. Just buy what you love, go into the store, try it out, you know, definitely do your research. You can feel free to watch YouTubers, you know, recommend what they think is a great first time bag. I generally default to the Speedy 25 or any of the Speedy bags just because it's such a classic shape and it closes, but it might, it might not be for everyone. And as much as I love my first Speedy 25 just for sentimental reasons, and that's why I wouldn't get rid of it. I don't reach for it often. I don't really use it that much, but you need to buy what you love as your first bag. Don't worry about what other people tell you to get or what you think is going to have a good resale value. If you love a limited edition collection, then get that, you know, even if it's older and you have to go to a reseller, just get what you love. So that's my advice. Sorry, it's not specific. Sometimes people message me saying, you know, what do you recommend for a first time bag, for a first LV bag, Speedy or a Neverfull? And I just say, get what you love. Get what you love and get what you will use. So that's my advice. If you can only shop from one luxury brand for the rest of your life, which one would it be and why? Ugh, this is a hard question. So if you asked me this years ago, it would be LV for sure. I think now, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know how to answer this because I just think about what I use the most. I guess it would be LV. Hmm. Yeah, I think it, I would say LV. You know, initially I was thinking, okay, Dior, I've been on a huge Dior binge recently. I have two Dior book totes. I love their shoes, but I love men's bags. And if I think about what I've been using recently, especially this past year during this pandemic, I've been using my LV men's bags more frequently, specifically the Outdoor Messenger. And I just think that, yeah, it would be that because I, I also love, I love Chanel. I, like I said, the Deauville is probably my most used tote, especially for travel and for times when I'm going to be out for a long time, whether it's an all day, you know, an all day trip or traveling. I love the Deauville, but yeah, I think it, it has to be LV. I'd say LV <laughs> just because I love their men's bags. Yeah. I love the variety of the items, especially in the men's collection. Yeah. I think it has to be, has to be LV, right? That's tough. But then again, if you're talking about skincare and beauty, I love Chanel. I don't know. I would, I probably would say LV. What are your thoughts on Loewe? Would you ever add a piece to your collection? It doesn't spark joy to me. Refer to my previous comment about uh, Marie Kondo's book, adding to your collection and keeping what sparks joy. Loewe bags don't spark joy for me. Then again, I've never really looked into it. And you know, it's one of those things where the more you look at something, the more it might kind of you might, the more you think about it, the more you think like, okay, I could consider that. But if I don't like something immediately, initially, you know, I'm not going to look into it anymore. And so just my initial reaction, that's, it's just not really my style. I think it's kind of boring, sorry. I think it's a great classic style for some people, but it's not something that I would add to my collection personally. So going back to LV and working at LV, would you ever go back and work at LV? Why or why not? So, you know, at one point I considered going back to LV <laughs> and maybe working part-time, you know, specifically. And, and I mentioned, and I don't know if I might've mentioned in, in one of my LV videos, but you know, some of my coworkers were part-time employees and they were work and they weren't moms who just wanted to work, you know, one, two, three days a week, part-time during the day while their kids were at school and it got them out of the house. 
and they then got a discount on the LV items. I think the environment now is so different. I don't know. So even though it did maybe a few years ago, I considered maybe seeing if I would, you know, go and work part-time at LV. First of all, I work full-time and I have three kids. So even though my, my actual work schedule is very flexible, there was just no way I could fit that into my schedule with my work and life and everything. It just wouldn't happen. You know, obviously when you work in retail and working at LV, you have to go into a store. And for the past year and more, I've been working remote 100%. So number one, report to a, an actual physical location. And number two, be under a very specific work schedule in terms of hours, you know, clocking in and out. I'm not about that life anymore. I'm very blessed to have a job in my legal career now. I'm very blessed to have a very flexible work schedule, flexible in terms of, you know, physically, flexible in terms of time management and also, you know, remote work. Although there are jobs with LV where you can work remote, but personally, I probably, I would not go back. Your worst experience in a luxury clothing store. So I typically have a great experience when I go into luxury stores, mostly because, you know, and it's not that I dress up or anything, but I just, I'm just, I'm pretty confident about my understanding of luxury items and I'm not defensive when I go in. I talk about how sometimes customers would be very defensive, especially when they were returning things. And so it just, you know, when you, when you start off initially already defensive, it doesn't, that's not conducive to a happy shopping experience. So for me, I'm pretty gregarious when I'm in a store. I'm, I'm very friendly with the salespeople. So ultimately it's a, it's usually a good experience. However, that's not always the case. <laughs> okay, uh, another very specific question. 10 lux things you would grab out of your house if it was burning down. Okay, very hypothetical. Obviously just the luxury item. So let's just assume in this hypothetical, my husband and my children are safe <laughs> and jewelry. I'm gonna put jewelry out there. For me, I keep all my jewelry, like my luxury jewelry in one spot. So I would grab that entire thing. <laughs> so all my luxury items, including my engagement ring and wedding band and all of my fine jewelry and my luxury fashion jewelry, I keep in one spot and I keep it pretty much already rolled up in a, in a travel jewelry case. So I'll just grab that whole case and then I can run out. So that's number one. <laughs> So that's the first item. Um, let's just see off the top of my head. Hmm, my bags are displayed. So I would say my LV on the go tote, my Chanel Deville, my Dior small Toit de Jouy book tote, my Hermes grooming bag. So these are all tote bags that I have so far. Uh, my LV Nice train case, my LV Manhattan PM. Oh, my LV Sac Amber the beach tote. I would get the items that have been discontinued because those are more difficult to replace. All of the newer bags pretty much can be replaced. So maybe I shouldn't grab my on the go or grooming bag because I can just replace those. My LV denim mini pleaty because again, that's limited edition. It's not available anymore. So it's hard to replace. What else? What's back here? Oh my God, I only have two more. Ah, probably my Fendi Mia flap and my Dior girly Boston bag. <laughs> because again, those are hard to replace. All right, so that's 10. It might change, don't hold me to this. If I do a video on this, it might change, who knows. Okay, Chanel customer shopping experience. I hear some people had a bad experience. So again, your shopping experience can vary with literally individual boutiques, even in the same area, and even in the same boutique, but just different sales associates. Generally, I've had great experiences at every store. I've I've shopped at. That probably is in part to my being pretty confident and just wanting to have an enjoyable shopping experience. I talked about a customer who returned an LV item and often these clients would be very almost hostile and because they would come in and they're and they're very defensive right away and they just kind of expect that it's going to be a difficult shopping experience and so it turns out to be that way. You know, they kind of manifest their own negative experiences. Again, that's just that's just a generality. That's not with everyone. But sometimes you just have a sales associate, but sometimes as a client, you just end up having a sales associate who is maybe just having a bad day. So I remember I went to a Dior boutique with a friend of mine and it was for her. She was shopping for, um, for earrings and we were looking at the earrings and I just was mentioning that, oh, you know, 
maybe you might not want crystals or rhinestones on it because sometimes they fall out and they don't that's not covered you know like that that doesn't it's not covered by the store they won't replace it or repair it which is pretty true i think with chanel i think it's true with all fashion jewelry across the brands but it depends it also depends on the boutique so i mentioned that and i think the sales associate and this was a brand new location we were traveling for a work trip at the time so we don't typically shop at this dior boutique because my dior essays are amazing near me but we were in a different location and she was she was like so rude the sales associate i guess she thought i was being really mean or negative towards Dior, which I mean, I really wasn't. I love Dior, but I just was being honest. You know, they really, I don't think they do replace them. And I think she even confirmed, yeah, we don't replace that. Because I asked, oh, is it true? Do you guys, you know, if the crystal falls out, would you guys repair it? Because maybe the change, I don't know. And she said, no, we, we don't repair that, but it shouldn't fall out or something like, she had a very flippant response. And so I was just like, okay. <laughs> I could kind of sense that she already was maybe getting maybe a little annoyed with us or at least by me because I was being honest with my friend and I think the essay just didn't appreciate that so <laughs> I mean I was being friendly the whole time but uh, it was so funny because even my friend picked up on it but she at one point I just was like oh you know sometimes the crystals might fall out and the sales associate said no it doesn't but okay sure like her her response was just so rude <laughs> but that wasn't the worst in general most experiences they're not awful it's just not ideal. And so another time I remember going to Chanel and this was a Chanel within a department store and the SA was very nice. She was very friendly, but she was so pushy. I don't appreciate that because I'm not a pushover. <laughs> I, I know what I like and you're not gonna talk me into anything. I am my I myself will talk myself into things and I will I sometimes need a you know a friend to kind of be like okay let's let's prioritize maybe you don't need all these things but let's what's your favorite thing whatever but I don't need you know a sales associate generally to push me into getting something and so I remember going into the Chanel uh, boutique within a department store and like I said the essay was very nice but I was debating between a color of the of between two bags and she resorted to the tactic and her sales tactic was you need to pay for this now because it's gonna sell out so fast and I was just like no don't don't you don't need to tell me that I know <laughs> I was looking into, I think it was the DeVille at the time. I'm okay with my DeVilles now, I had two, but this is when I was debating between getting a current one, I think, or maybe I was waiting for the new collection to come out. And she was just like, are you, you need to wait list now and pay in full because these are gonna sell out so fast. You don't need to tell me that it's gonna sell out fast. I know if it's gonna sell out. First of all, I was already the one asking her about this. Like this collection hadn't come out yet. It hadn't released yet. So if it was waitlisted, I mean, I'll be able to find it. I have many, I have so many Chanel <laughs> sales associates in my, you know, contacts that I can go to. Her sales tactic was very just pushy and aggressive. And it was solely on the fact that something was gonna sell out not whether I needed it or what color would work for me. And I don't, and again, I don't need a sales associate to tell me almost to guide me on what color I should get that will work for me and my collection because I'm very comfortable obviously with luxury bags. I know what would work for me and I can, you know, I can consider all those factors myself. She just was relying on, this is gonna sell out, so you better get it, whatever it is. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't need you for that. You know, I can do that on my own. I can spend my money easily on my own. And so my next question is, tell us about your Hermes journey. Are you on it or done? Other Hermes questions. What is your dream bag from Hermes? So my Hermes journey, I am kind of on the journey, but I'm not fully invested in it, I guess. I, you know, I've purchased a few things from Hermes. I have kind of a wish list with my Hermes SA. My recent purchase is my Hermes grooming bag, which I use as a diaper bag and it's great. And I plan to film a what's in my bag video about it, but I am on it. I'm not 100% done, but I'm not living for Hermes. My dream bag probably would be a Birkin, either a 25 or 30 in pretty much any neutral color or blue, like a dark blue color. But it's not, I'm not gonna die for an Hermes bag. I'm not going to, I'm not holding my breath for it. If I get it, I get it. And if I don't, it's not a big deal either. So, you know, that's my journey. I don't buy things that I don't want or need just with the sole, 
you know, expectation that I will be offered a bag. I don't feel entitled to a bag, and I, but I also am not expecting anything and I'm not waiting around for it. If I really wanted a very specific Hermes bag, I would go the pre-loved route. There are resellers that I have purchased from and I would consider purchasing a pre-owned one from one of those resellers. I just have other priorities right now. So, so we'll see, that's my Hermes journey, yeah. So again, yeah, I have purchased a few things. I have my Hermes pillow and blanket back there. I have my Hermes grooming bag that I got, some, I got a bracelet recently, you know, some scarves, but these are things that I want and love. Oh, my Hermes pop-up book too, which is great. I'm still on it, so we'll see. Okay, speaking of grooming bag, uh, grooming bag or book tote? I don't know. I guess, so I guess the question is, you know, choose one. Uh, I just, I love the look of the book tote, but the grooming bag is so practical for me. I've been using it a lot. I used it Easter recently. I use it recently on Mother's Day. It's just so practical. It's got the long shoulder strap. It's got multiple pockets. I'd have to say grooming bag. <laughs> I love the look of the book tote, but the grooming bag, the grooming bag is so convenient and practical and utilitarian. So yeah, stay tuned. I will be doing a what's in my bag for that very soon. The best deal I ever scored, I would say probably my vintage Dior saddle in the burgundy oblique. And I have it hanging, I'm not gonna go get it now, but can you see it hanging up there? It's on the wall right there. <laughs> so yeah, I got that from, I believe it was Fashion File and it was such a great score. It was like, it was less than a thousand. This was maybe right before the vintage resale market hit its peak because of all the price increases during last year's pandemic. So yeah, it was great value, great deal. They've increased a lot more, but even before then, I mean, you could get such great deals with vintage bags. I did an entire video on vintage bags. I did a vintage bags haul. So, um, but yeah, check that out. But that's probably the greatest deal because I mean, I think now the vintage Dior saddlebags are, you're looking at 2000 on average and more for the really limited pieces. Okay, top three LV beginner pieces. And I know I just talked about, you know, my advice for a person buying their first LV bag, but my advice for the first three beginner pieces, I would say get a big bag, get a small bag and get an SLG. And specifically, you know, so get the items that work best for you, but specifically, I think the best SLG for me definitely is the six ring key holder because it holds all my keys and it holds cards behind it. So it's, and for me, I like to keep all the keys contained rather than getting the push-up clay, which you can keep cards inside the little zip pouch and then you have one key ring and you keep all your keys kind of loose and jangly around there. I like the six ring key holder because it keeps it contained the keys inside are, you know, kept contained and then you can keep extra cards behind it, but then you can close it. And this way it protects all the items inside your bag. The other two bags I would say are a tote bag and then a crossbody. <laughs> and again, you know, get the ones that work for you. For me, it would be the LV on the go GM. I love that it's structured. I love that it top handles and shoulder straps and it just holds so much. It's great for work and it's great for travel. And then, a crossbody bag for me <laughs> is my my favorite is the LV Outdoor Messenger. I use it all the time. It's from the men's collection. I did a video about it. It has two pouches. It's very large, but has a small profile and it just fits so much. I can fit baby bottles and everything. My keys, sunglasses, you know, snacks, but it's still pretty small and it's crossbody. So it's hands-free and the crossbody itself is very wide. So it's not digging into your shoulders. So those are my, favorite three LV beginner pieces. <laughs> or a Speedy would be great also. Maybe the Speedy Bandolier because then it's a zip closure also. So my, so those are my three, I guess, recommended LV bags. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap up this Q&A. I did get a few more questions and I can do, uh, I can do more going forward, but uh, yeah. So if you haven't seen my first one, that was more personal. This is more luxury related but I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. Let me know if you have any other questions you want me to answer and I can address that in another video. But I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.